Hello YouTube, thank you. We made it to 500 subscribers. And I know we've still been climbing. This is now a few videos since that, uh, since that threshold was reached. But thank you so much for your support. I'm looking forward to seeing how far we grow from here. And I know that this is just the thank you for the 500, but as a reminder, make sure you are subscribed. I only have about half of the people watching my videos who are. So if everyone who's watching this does subscribe, we're going to be at a thousand. And when I reach a thousand, that's when I'm going to be eating the last stab. Sean Evans, you can invite me on. I'll be training. Alas, anyway, so we have a very exciting challenge coming up and then I'm going to actually go into some channel updates. We have some content that I'm going to be getting into uh, regarding the fact that I have a hernia that I actually got about six years ago at this point. And I'm going to be getting that repaired this Friday. So I'm not sure exactly when this video is going to be coming out, but presumably very soon. And um, I'm going to be documenting and sort of vlogging my uh, recovery process. And right now I'm thinking that if all goes well enough, um, my goal will be to be able to pull at least six plates on a deadlift by the time my 31st birthday rolls around. So for the 500 subscribers challenge, it's going to be two parts. First of all, we're going to be focusing on anabolic diet. Secondly, we're going to be focusing on powerlifting. Two things we're going to be putting together. And the way I want to do that, um, and who knows how recommended this is, I'm sure it's absolutely not, but I am going to be drinking 500 grams of Vita Fiber. And if I have to stop and put it down, I will be needing to take a whiff of ammonia salts. See the video here? That's what I'm talking about. We will snap those in powerlifting meets or, you know, I know that strongmen and other athletes will use them too as a way of psyching ourselves up for big lifts. It's uh, something that I really enjoy doing when I am competing in powerlifting It's a, or even when I'm training. It's just fun. It just gets you that much more amped. And it's something that I look forward to is when, you know, I'm in the midst of training. It's been a while since I've really pushed myself. But when I am, you know, getting to the point where it's like, okay, you're going to be uh, cracking three ammonia sticks for this deadlift uh, attempt. It's so exciting. So let's get the scale, the measuring cup, and the Vita Fiber and, uh, see how this goes. All right, so here we are. Um, this actually happened in shipping. So yeah, Vita Fiber, really expensive, not something that I'm really getting as much anymore. Um, for my own videos, I've been, as you've seen, in my own recipes, I've been using other sources of fiber and sweetener, just because this is just not as cost-effective or easy to work with um, as I'd like. So here we are, have a scale, measuring cup and I hope this comes out to being 500 grams if not then uh well it's it's probably close enough and here I have my ammonia salts and there we go so I'm going to take a couple of these out and have them at the ready if I have to stop they look like this and you just crack it and inhale the fumes. Um, so this is something that I'm uh, very much nervous about. The Vita fiber is really quite viscous. And of course, that's a lot of fiber. I have no idea what I'm going to be needing to eat later <laughs> to keep everything together. But um, let's give it a shot. So beating up the scale and let's measure. I think 250, we're halfway there. It's a little under a cup. Past 300. 
400. All right. So this is actually 501.1 grams. Let's give it a go. Wish me luck. Cheers. That was thoroughly disgusting. Didn't have to stop though. <sighs> um, gosh, it's so sticky. Whatever, I'm gonna hit pneumonia just for the sake of it. Oh, Whew, that makes me wanna lift again. Oh, wow, I cannot wait. Um, so, yeah, um, in one of my uh, follow-up videos here as we, and yeah, it turns, turns red after so you know that it's been used. Um, there's actually a little glass vial in here, so you actually have to be really careful when you're using them. I've definitely cut my fingers open before. Um, so if you use these, I like to use these for my powerlifting meets rather than using bottle. I started off using the bottles, but that you would dry up. This is gonna be good forever, right? These are meant to be in first aid kits in case of fainting, um, because it can help like sort of like get you awakened. That's of course not how powerlifters are using it. However, when you're having it in a bottle, it you know it will start off really strong. Like I bought the Ah from Juji Mufu, and the first time I used it, half my face went numb for 15 minutes because it only went up one nostril. Uh, it was just a huge punch of ammonia, and it was it was like actually too much. Um, for some reason it was for a bench attempt and I could not press because all I, I was just too overwhelmed by the fact that I had so much of it going up one nostril and yeah, my face was all numb. Actually, before we move on, let me check in editing. This is how long it took for me to drink that. So maybe we have a new challenge. Anybody else trying to drink 500 grams of Vita Fiber? It might not be recommended. In fact, I probably shouldn't recommend it, but my goodness, right? We're always trying to get more fiber, people say. Actually, before we move forward and get into the channel update, you know you can change the speed on YouTube, right? I feel like a lot of viewers don't know that you can actually change the speed. I watch everything on two times speed and that's only because it's the maximum speed. If we had a two and a half, I'd probably be using that quite frankly. Um, when I'm listening to audiobooks, it's usually at a two and a half times speed. It's just easier for me to process the information. Most people speak slower than I can, uh, I can listen to without being distracted. Um, so yes, uh, my hernia. So it's, I think it's an umbilical hernia. It's near my belly button, uh, not quite on it. So it's some sort of abdominal hernia, it's not an inguinal. So the hernia is right here. And so that's where you can see that uh, my intestines are sort of poking through. So they're gonna be cutting me open. Um, it's, it's an open surgery, it's not a laparoscopic. I asked and apparently there's the trade-off between open and lap. And when you're doing an open surgery, it's a much lower likelihood of recurrence, assuming that they can get the mesh put into the, the uh, abdominal cavity a little bit better. 
Whereas with a laparoscopic, you have a lower incidence of infection, but a higher incidence of recurrence. And especially given that I want to lift, this is, uh, this is the preferred option. So Friday, uh, presumably morning as of the last time I checked, though it's still up to, uh, up to change, subject to change. But Friday morning, I'll be going in, and uh, then it's going to be a few weeks of recovery at the very least. So that's something I'll be able to track for you all, um, especially coming from a fitness perspective. Because I want to be able to start lifting again. Um, ever since I got the appointment set back in December, um, when I first contacted the surgeon, I was told that I shouldn't be doing heavy lifting um, because I don't want to push anything further. Even though I've had it for so long, I've squatted 600 pounds with it. I've deadlifted 675 pounds with this, but you know, all told, probably not the best bet to be pushing the limits now. Um, have the date all set up, and this is something that I put off for a very long time. I didn't even want to acknowledge that it was a hernia for years. It, you know, it's something bulging out of my. Uh, bulging through my abs and I had to like push it in quite frequently uh, just as things move through my gut and it would it would come out and I'd be uh, shoving it back in sorry uh, for the faint of heart it's not exactly the most pleasant thing to be hearing about but in that sense I'm very much looking forward to having that chapter of my life getting to close even if the next month or so is uh, a little on the rough side it's going to be worthwhile because uh, I won't have to spend minutes every day shoving my intestines back into my abdomen. Um, so, so that's one part of it. Another thing that I'm actually really looking forward to is getting to do more, uh, more of my training beltless because like I haven't, um, I haven't squatted beltless. Um, and most of my bed lifting, I, I mean, I do some belt lifts, but mostly I wasn't unless it was uh, deficits and I couldn't reach, uh, well, depending on my weight, but I definitely wasn't squatting belt lifts because it just felt compromised. And uh, I didn't practice doing like sumo, de uh, sumo deadlifting belt lifts. So I'm actually really excited to try sumo belt lifts once I uh, get this repaired and get recovered a bit. So we'll see how things go. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a reason to push myself in lifting because that hasn't been there. Um, it's been almost a year since I uh, tore my, oh no, it's been over a little over a year since I tore my quad a week and a half out from our last meet, which is almost a year ago. Um, where I did set a PR total um, <laughs> somehow, although well, my bench, my bench progressed. But that was on a torn, a grade one tear uh, on my quadriceps. So it was uh, not the most enjoyable time. So since then, you know, after the meet and then COVID, I haven't really had much of a motivation to push and drive through things. You know, our meets got post, our meet got postponed until eventually we decided to just get a refund on it rather than. Um, not be you know able to see where that that was you know it just it's it's all too tentative um so it'll be nice to have a reason to be you know really pushing again but besides that you know i just want to stress to you all don't assume that something is safe because it's a machine and like i was saying earlier i'm pretty certain at this point that that hernia, I, you know, the hernia ruptured because I uh, used to do a lot of leg pressing back when I competed in bodybuilding. And the hernia was very present then. I didn't, you know, know as much about trying to reduce it. It was very stagnant at the time. It wasn't to the point where I like thought I could push it back in because I was in denial of it being a hernia for, for a long time. And I was just thinking, oh, maybe it'll be like a curly vein or something, but like, no, it's, that's not the case. You don't get curly veins that show up as a, just a giant bulge without you seeing the vasculature coming to it. That would be ridiculous. So yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be what we have on the docket. 
And uh, so look forward to seeing what those updates are. Uh, I'll see if I can do some vlogging from the uh, surgical center. This isn't going to be happening at the uh, regular hospital simply because of COVID, right? So there's actually a bit of a relationship that they have with another surgery focused center. And that's where I'm going to be uh, having my operation here in San Jose. So looking forward to getting that done and giving you all uh, who are on the internet uh, an update. Um, we'll see if I can like still do a vacuum pose after or if the mesh is going to be interfering with that. Uh, strangely, that's something that I've been able to do like my entire life. Um, I don't remember a time I, that I couldn't. I remember doing that in uh, daycare, which I stopped going to in third grade. But I would like show how skinny I could make myself by like, you know, sucking it all up into my ribs. It also helps that I have a very large rib cage. Um, but, you know, I'm curious to see, is that still something I'll be able to do afterwards? Um, and if not, like in the first couple of months after the mesh has time to integrate, is that going to be something that's uh, feasible? So, you know, it's going to be an interesting thing. I'm looking forward to keeping the internet updated and being able to track my progress here and give documentation for those of you who might have a hernia you're not looking forward to getting because you're worried about the recovery. I know that that's been driving me absolutely bonkers. I've been riddled with anxiety and just very stressed about what to expect, not having had a real surgery before in my life, and this is being done in my abdomen. So it's quite invasive. Seeing what that trajectory is going to be like. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you again for 500 subs. I'm still just flabbergasted. You know, when I started this back in October, I it was like a pipe dream to be coming up on a, a thousand. And now it's like, okay, a thousand subscribers actually seems quite feasible. And we'll see what that process uh, looks like over the next couple of months. And over the next few months, next however many months it takes to get there and uh, how long it takes to get further growth from there. Um, but in the meantime, thank you all. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. And if you're you know, wanting to wish any good luck or anything, drop a comment below or just comment below for the algorithm. You know, if you're here because you're about to be getting a hernia surgery and you're trying to get some reassurance, know that there really isn't that much information about what you should expect and what the recovery is like. There are so few things from people who went through abdominal surgery for a hernia that wasn't inguinal. That's almost everything I've been seeing. So if that's you, know that you're not alone. It can happen in other adults and this will be my journey. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on those post notifications. Follow my Instagram as well. Uh, let's see. No, no, it'll be over here. All right, I'll put it in this corner. Sorry, the, the reflector. Um, yeah, it'll be over in this corner. Follow me uh, at underscore black door underscore. And I might just give little updates there if I can't just do a full vlogging when I'm in the surgery center. Uh, there might be little like stories or something um, as I recover. So look forward to growing with you all. And until that next one, always remember to stay worthy.